So now you know now you know a little bit about pilots. You know a little bit about the types of questions that you can ask. And now we're going to get into what is where we have problems and where we are where we are here. <laughs> Only a few months ago, this was the Orange County Partnership logo, and it's a triangle, an equilateral triangle. For those of you who remember <laughs> geometry, I was a math. Uh, the Orange County Partnership is here. The IDA is here. This is the county IDA. And our county is over here. Okay? The visual, okay, visuals are really, really important in giving subliminal messages to people. The visual is that everybody's equal here. Okay? And this is their this is their logo. When you went to the Orange County website, if you clicked here on economic development. Okay, this is the main menu, you know, your buttons up top. Look at where it brought you. It brought you to the Orange County Partnership. Okay? This is a private, but it's on the county website. It says here, a private economic development agency. It doesn't say that they're a county economic development agency. When you go to Sullivan County, and you want to go do business with Sullivan County, of Bethel, the phone number. You have all the various things. You have all the links to the town codes. So you can actually get real information without talking, you know, on a chat now type of basis. A little bit different. So then Orange County Partnership got in trouble with the authority's budget office. And, right, we said it was a private organization. So Orange County had to change their website. Well, they changed their website anyhow. They updated it. I wonder if they got a 485B to do that. By the way, 485Bs, what I didn't say about 485Bs, the original intention of 485B was to do improvements. It was to encourage businesses to bring their buildings and their, their uh, operations up to date. Okay, that was the original intention of a 485B. It was not meant for new construction originally. But anyway, so here we have uh, the IDA, the Foreign Transfer Zone, which is a, a government agency, mm -hmm. uh, the Orange County Accelerator, which is actually a really wonderful program that the IDA does. <coughs> I thought they were a private company. What are they doing here? This is uh, Stewart Airport, okay, the MTA. What are they doing here with all these guys? I thought they were a private company. In addition, they get paid by all the towns. Okay? The town pays the Orange County Partnership to be considered for one of their projects. It's a budget item for the town. Our, our Goshen has it as a, a standing committee. Doug Bluefield, Orange County Partnership, and the Jedi. We're going to talk about the Jedi in a second. That's really cute. Um, at a meeting in Hamptonburg, I was kind of stunned. I asked the supervisor, I said, do you pay the Orange County Partnership every year? He said, oh, yes, we do. And I said, how much do you pay the Orange County Partnership? And he almost fell off my chair when he said $1,800 a year. And then I asked him, I said, okay, we're on a roll here. He's answering my questions. Why do you pay the Orange County Partnership $1,800 a year? And he says, for the privilege of them talking to us. Okay? So he was telling me the truth. You know, he really was. He was telling me the truth. It's for the privilege of being considered. <coughs> now, that's in Hamptonburg. I live in Hamptonburg. And they were the darling of the Orange County Partnership for a while, but now, look, <laughs> lately Maureen Hallahan has been heard saying, this is Hamptonburg. Don't be like Hamptonburg. <laughs> they don't like us anymore. Every municipality in Orange County contributes funds for their operations. Every municipality. Some of them we're going to get. I have a list of them. In a minute. Thanks. Partnership classifies these contributions as investments. This is, by the way, in this wonderful publication put out by the authority by the State Controller's Office. All right, this is these are not my words. This is not my discovery. Orange County officials were unable to adequately describe 
what each municipality receives for this investment. So the, the, Denapoli said, you know, okay, they give you money, what do they get for their money? More money. They couldn't say. <laughs> So, but and what's even more interesting is that the amount of funding from each municipality varies, which really indicates that it's a sponsorship rather than a contractual fee for service. Okay, this is a privately negotiated, who knows what their criteria are. Because if it's a fee for service, it would list specific things that they're going to do for you for those prices. Instead, it appears to charge varying prices for each governmental entity based upon the effort it provides for the county, as well as on behalf of each city, town, and village within Orange County. So that indicates that these really are sponsorships to generate economic development. And here you see some of the towns, all right? Um, <coughs> Wallkill, that's a lot of money, right? For Wallkill, $3,300. I hope they got a lot of stuff for it. Montgomery pays 1870 This is this is uh, 2017. Goshen is on here, but Goshen's in another in another thing. Wayweyan is on here. Way Wayanda paid a lot of money right before uh, CPV came in for you people that are from that area. Okay. Uh, Crawford Crawford gets by cheaply. I guess they don't have a whole lot of land. $330. So the partnership also, I almost fell off my chair when I saw this, several million dollars in public funds from Orange County. Several million dollars in public funds since their inception. They continue to receive funding from other municipalities despite what appears to be the recent tabling of funding on the county level. They're denying that they get paid from the county. This is what the IBA paid. This is where they have the figures from. Because these, these tax returns were online. If you go to guidestar.com, you can find them. <coughs> we had actually asked for their tax returns. We were told that we were not entitled to have them. We they asked for the funding. partnership. We didn't ask the authority to collect them all. Okay. So I do have copies of all their tax returns. So they were getting 217000 uh, around that air from them. But their total funding was $400,000. And a lot of that money came from the county. There are line items in the county budgets that we found that refer to Orange County Partnership. So one of the mentions before was the JEDI. JEDI stands for Joint Economic Development Initiative. And it was in 2014. And here we have Doug Blomfield, Supervisor Goshen. Mary Israelski, she's with uh, Rand Realty. Phil Bracken, he's the uh, planning board. on the planning board, but he's the uh, assistant chair to the planning board. Ray Petrini, he left. He says, I don't like what you guys are doing. I'm out of here. I, want to, I don't want to be part of this. So he walked away from this. Kyle Wright, the former mayor of, uh, of uh, Goshen, of the village of Goshen. Uncle Stevie. Neil Halloran. And there's Maureen Hallahan. Neil Halloran is the building inspector oh, sorry, building for the town inspector. of Goshen. I have to tell you, when I, when I first started with these people, Deb knew, Deb Core knew all these people. I didn't know who any of these people were. And I had this whiteboard, and I put these names up, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, this one goes to that town, and that one goes to this town. And I had, I had spaghetti by the time. I had, you know, the spaghetti trials they show you for the hurricanes? That's what I had by the time I was done with this, trying to figure out who belongs to who, and what's their real job. You know, would the real Jedi please stand up? So they had a lot of fun with this. They actually had things of them dressed up in the various characters. You know, one was Luke Skywalker. I mean, this is, these are grown men. Seriously. <laughs> okay. Goshen Planning Board. Also, he was with the uh, uh, Orange County Partnership. Bluefield. Right before July of 2016, Legoland was announced as a done deal, July of 2016. They had not been before the town board. There had not been a single public meeting about them. He goes to the IDA meeting at the very beginning, and he goes, I want Lego land here. We want to give them a soft landing. He knew nothing about this project. He didn't know a damn thing. He didn't know how much money they were going to do, how much land they had, nothing. But yet he's in favor of it. That doesn't sound like an intelligent approach to me. The Goshen mayor, he says, oh, I'll give them the water. We have plenty of water in Goshen. But yet they couldn't put a fire out at the, at the horse barns, right? Lego land made it me a commitment from day one, Steve Newhouse. 
if you have to look at this Time Hello Record uh, article, they actually listed all of his uh, uh, campaign contributions. So they did such a good job on that tour bus that brought people around that the Orange County Partnership named them the MVP in 2014. So many of these people wear two hats. Mike Torelli, okay, he's uh, Village Planning Board, Village Vision. Right, Village Planning Board, okay, and you have here, uh, Director of Business Attraction for the Orange County Partnership. <laughs> He's on the uh, village of Goshen Planning Board. <coughs> this man, you guys know this guy? Yeah. Featherston? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Facilitating municipal approval process. That's one of the things he does. He facilitates. He's proud of this. This is a big web page. This is still up, this web page. That's what he does. He facilitates the municipal approval process, and yet he's the planning board engineer for the for the uh, town of Montgomery voting on Orange County Partnership projects. How does that work? How does that happen? Talk about wearing hats. <laughs> Let's go through his jobs. Chairman of the Orange County Legislature District 9. Mayor of Village of Montgomery. Village of Montgomery trustee prior to being mayor. Village of Montgomery mayor. Salesperson, I don't think he works for Tets anymore. I think that he does. He still works for Tets. Uh, works for Tets and Sons. Secretary of the Orange County IDA. Is there any possibility here for him not making a proper decision? And I'm not saying these people are criminals, okay? I'm not saying that they're criminals, outright criminals. They could be. I have no idea. But what I am saying is that you can't represent all these different masters and remain untainted and not have some prejudgment as to where you're going to go with all of these things. It was the mayor of Montgomery. I like him with the beard better. <laughs> <laughs> mayor of Montgomery for 28 years, Orange County legislator, 24 years. Retail lumber business, that was his family business, 30 years. Uh, lives in Montgomery. Uh, this, is, by the way, is his Facebook profile. I did not make this up. I didn't put this together. This is his Facebook profile. It's still there today. You can go friend him. Uh, DWI. <laughs> not, not to mention his campaign uh, contribution filings. Well, yes. <laughs> so he's been a member of the IDA since 2002. He still sits on the IDA. Uh, former chairman of the, of the governance, governance Committee for the IDA. He serves in the village and so on and so forth. He has a wide portfolio. You know, here's the sad thing about this, guys, and I mean this with, with great seriousness. This is a man who has tremendous municipal experience. He has tremendous assets to bring to the table in knowledge of this area and being able to advocate for the people who live here. But I don't see that it's being used that way. And that's the really, that to me is the, is the tragic part of all of this. You know, these are, these are people with good solid experience. He has tremendous business experience. And yet it's not being used for the people who elected him. And that's, that's what to me is very tragic. <coughs> and he doesn't let other people speak. This is your current 2018 <laughs> board of directors. Uh, I see this guy in court a lot. We have here Jeffrey Christ. He's head of the Montgomery IDA. Mm -hmm. Chairman of the Montgomery IDA. He is a director of the Orange County Partnership. He gets to decide which Orange County Partnerships get pilots and how much they cost. Okay, Todd DiOrio, we talked about him before. He's the labor union leader. Who is he serving? Does he serve his union or does he serve the partnership? Can you serve both of them? Andrew Featherston. Um, Gary Tetz. Gary Tetz. Okay, then you have your directors and artists. Professional engineer of Montgomery advising on multiple projects. There's something else that they do. The Orange County Partnership doesn't just solicit businesses. <coughs> the Alliance for Balanced Growth has been tracking the progress of the new DEC wetlands maps that will substantially increase the size of regulated wetlands area in Orange County. Okay. DEC wetlands maps could hurt local businesses. This is what they do. They were not in favor of redoing the wetlands maps. They were against it because they said, oh my God, they're making all this land wetlands. Where are we going to put all these projects that we have? So they fought this. 
Okay. In addition, the other thing they bought in their lobbying efforts was a scaffolding bill. All right, there was a scaffolding bill requiring buildings to put scaffolding up to protect the workers. They fought that bill up in Albany. They lobbied against that bill. It's a very popular bill. It saved hundreds of lives. So it's not, it's not a good group of people here. Rick Golden. Um, he's a Goshen attorney, but maybe he's the Orange County partnership attorney. It's both. Oh, he's both. He represents the Orange County Partnership. He is in charge of the ethics <laughs> committee <laughs> for Orange County. <laughs> so we go to complain about the ethics of somebody, it goes to Rick. <laughs> okay. But it's they said ahead. the DEIS for Legoland contains sufficient empirical data to satisfy the project requirements, and there's no need to provide more information. They could do some job creation just by spitting somebody's job book, though. I can't. Yep. Huh? No, no, no. They could do some job creation yep. just by spitting somebody's job book. Yes. So <coughs> he said he he told me recently. He says I he told he told Deb he wouldn't tell me because I was probably in the book of the hand. But <laughs> he told Deb he says I'm not I I have nothing to do with the partnership. I'm not their attorney. And I went to court the next day, and there he was pleading for the Orange County. Partnership. He is their attorney. I have lots and lots of legal documents. I read all of the legal documents. Okay. Dominic Perdisco, he's a member of the uh, uh, partnership. Actually, he got the MVP. Mm. Dominic must have done something really, really good for them. He happens to benefit from this because he's the lawyer for Legoland. Okay. Um, look at some of the past people, strategic partners. Robert Armistead, he was head of the IDA at the very first IDA meeting I went. He's the one who redid the Goshen, got the contract for the Goshen County building mm -hmm. to redo that whole thing. That was yes. pretty lucrative, huh? Eddie Diana, we all know him. Mm -hmm. Boo. <laughs> Michael Pinoy, he was uh, chairman of the Orange County Legislature. A lot of these people are, are very involved in all of this. And this picture, <coughs> what's important about this picture is this picture was at the July presentation that Legoland did at the Hacienda. This was, again, before the documents were presented to the town of Goshen. And here is Steve saying, we want these people here. How do you know? Why are you coming out for these projects? Why are you opening your mouth? You could be really wrong. You could be really embarrassed. And now he can't backpedal, all right? Legoland has, what? 29 violations against them, $350,000 worth of fines. They've been shut down multiple times. But he's speaking on behalf of them before he opened his mouth, before he knew what was going on here. So for doing that, he got the MVP award in 2017. He was such a good boy. Uh, and he did their bidding. Okay, there they are in partnership. <laughs> Maureen has her hand up. Which leads us to the question, do you have to pay to play in Orange County? According to the online record online, this is a uh, article that they did in 2015 of the finance law, and they listed all of the various uh, projects. And you'd be, you would probably not be surprised at all to see who paid. The issue with the Orange County partnership projects is that all of the awards go to their people. So if you're not a member, if you're not a supporter, if you're not one of them, you don't get a job when the jobs come in. I understand a company wanting to, if I'm going into an area that I don't know that well, and somebody says, listen, I have everybody. If I'm going to buy a house in a new area when I bought that my house up here, the guy said, oh, I know a painter, I know this guy, I know this guy, I know a plumber. All these things that needed to be done. It's easy, right? But these people didn't pay that guy <laughs> ahead of time to be those recommended people, right? The, the real estate brokers, <laughs> in general, will recommend people because they've had good business dealings with them and they want you to be happy. In this case, if they're not on their list, you're not going to get a job. And I'll tell you something, if, and, and we, there are some businesses, I do know of several people who are on this list, because I've spoken to them, 
that are on this list because they feel they need to be. Okay? They don't buy into this whole thing, and they watch them very carefully. They feel they need to be in order to play here. What they say is our circle of success is based on the fact that there is a measurable return for your participation as an investor. <laughs> this is a standard statement, by the way, that, that most companies, I talked about this with a friend of mine, and she said, this is, all companies have this, basically. It's on their annual reports. But let's not forget, this is a government entity. They're excluding any company. This is a government entity, so they're excluding the companies who do not pay to play. They don't have the right to do that. If you are a government entity, you have the absolute obligation <coughs> to include everybody who is a member of your chamber of commerce, everybody who is in your town. You're required to tell those people, these people here, they're part of our community. Use them for your laborers. Use them for your health. These are their, some of their distinguished investors in the village of Goshen. All of these people paid. Yeah, CPV, big one. CPV paid a lot of money. CPV, CPV's lawyer, CPV's workers, CPV workers, contractors, CPV, pipeline, CPV. Right. So, Armistead, Lincoln, Tully, back. Okay, you have, okay, uh, Armistead Mechanics, Atlas Securities, how many meetings that poor man <laughs> oh, went to so many meetings? Yeah, get get on mine. Burke, Bailey, and Golden Population. Lincoln Tully. But but he doesn't have anything to do with the Orange County Partnership. Right? Oh. So what do we have to do here? Okay, how are we going to remedy some of this situation? This policy, by the way, is under the authority's budget office. This is their written policy. I'll show you the actual page in a minute. It's important for the public to have confidence in the board of directors of every public authority. That goes without saying, right? Board members have a fiduciary duty to disclose all real or potential conflicts of interest and to refrain from participating in discussions or decisions that could cause even the appearance of such a conflict. Maureen Hallahan went to the back room with Ringel, was his, is that what his name is? Winchell. 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 Right after a meeting, the two of them hustle off to the back room. What are they talking about? Shouldn't have happened. Okay? I don't care what they're talking about. They could have said, he could have said, nice job, Maureen. It could have ended at that. It doesn't matter. It's a conflict of interest. It's the appearance of wrongdoing. It's the appearance of something going on behind your back. And it happens so often around here, it's really hard to believe that it's not. The Attorney General has opined that board members with conflict of interest must recuse themselves from any deliberations or voting. They must. Not should. Must. Must. They must recuse themselves from any deliberations or voting concerning the matter creating a conflict. Any person who knowingly and willingly participates in matters that present a clear conflict of interest can be fined, suspended, or removed from office in the manner provided by the law, and action can be taken, their action that was taken can be deemed null and void and wholly unenforceable. <coughs> I was at a, as I mentioned, I was at a conference recently. You can go to the next slide. I was at a conference recently, and every single it was a veterinary conference, and every single presenter gets up there. These are the top researchers in the world in veterinary medicine, and every single one of them got up there, and they said, this is my disclosure statement before they gave their speech. Okay, I work for Purina. I work for this. I work for that. My laboratory did this research. <clears throat> I own it. It's been pure. Whatever they have to say to you, they will tell you. And in some cases, if it is a conflict of interest, they will tell you, I work for Purina. This is a study on nutrition. You know where they're coming from, you know what they're starting, you know what their baseline is, okay? You know where they're, where they're coming from. This is what this page looks like, okay? It's a great little book, great reading, especially if you're an insomniac. <laughs> so this is pretty much my impression of how things get done, okay? They took a piece of paper and they threw it. Ran out and gave it back to us in the Yeah, they ran lot. out of the office because they deposited it there, and they ran out and they threw it in Sandy's face. Sandy does all of our foil work, and they just threw it right in her face in the car. And they go, we're not foilable. You're a public agency, you're foilable. It's really quite simple. The court says Orange County must open their books. So... Available public records and the records provided to the ABO by the partnership 
after they received a subpoena, demonstrate, this is not my words, this is the words of, Tom, of Perlman, who is uh, with the Authority's Budget Office, was created by and has remained a sponsored entity by Orange County during the period in question. Both public officers and private individuals served in the partnership board members until very recently, including the county executive and the chair of the IDA. On his federal tax forms and in news articles during the periods in question, the partnership is referred to as a creature created by Orange County. Yet, the partnership continues to assert to the ABO that it is no longer connected with government and has discontinued representing itself as a representative of government. That means you can't take any money from government, any of the governments, okay? However, this is not accurate. The partnership continues its course unaverred. It continues to re represent itself to the public that is the county's official of economic development, office of economic development, and that it is responsible for the packaging of government benefits provided within Orange County. They do, they package everything for you. Whether it's a press availability taken from the Facebook page or is substantiated by a complaint submitted to the ABO by a private individual. <coughs> Napoli said that the need for close scrutiny of economic development efforts has never been higher. They need to do with, you know, something about it. They, they, when they came to, the, uh, to Orange County and they sat in front of Anna Free, they had 20 lawyers. The, the uh, <coughs> authorities' budget office had 20 lawyers. And then Golden gets up and he says, okay, Judge, we had a private conversation, so this is what they agreed to. And he proceeds to to fabricate whatever they do. Anyway, he's very optimistic. Oops. The same ABO that criticized Maureen Hallahan for claiming to be a private entity was partially funded by your tax dollars. It's county money. For this, the projects, Maureen, 50.5 jobs for over $1.8 million. Is this your idea of jobs, jobs, jobs? That's what she gets up every meeting starts. It's about jobs, right? Jobs. Why don't you just give 50 and a half people the tax breaks instead? That's $35,000 in tax breaks for each 50 and a half people. Rick Golden says, uh, <clears throat> remember he said he didn't represent the partnership? As you know, this office represents Orange County Partnership. <laughs> okay? And, and he gives the way they are <coughs> doing business as. Okay? The partnership is now entitled to a new determination. What they did, okay? is that the, uh, this Perlman said, no, I'm sorry, you engaged in deceptive business practices. That's what you did. And then we're in, they sent to Ms. Hallahan a record to indicate that the county has given more than $800,000 in unrestricted grants to this organization since 2008. We're not talking pennies here, guys. We're talking a you know, fair amount of money. In addition, they'll be expected to make all this information available to the public on the website. Not fair. <laughs> Great Globe says, the partnership was formed by the IDA, is what you said, but I'm telling you it was formed by Orange County. Really? 2012. This lawsuit's been going on forever. So let's remember, the IDA gave them a considerable amount of funding here, and this is what the county gave them. What they did is they were told, I was at the meeting when this happened, I was actually at a, at a ledge meeting when this happened, the, they did a simple bylaws change. You can't do a simple bylaws change to reorganize anything. You have to disband the corporation, you have to get rid of its assets, and reorganize. Okay? There has to be a waiting period and then you have to reorganize. They didn't want to do that, there's a lot of money sitting there. A lot of money sitting there. Um, so they decided to do a simple bylaws change. And they said, okay, this is our new board of directors. <coughs> and then the Orange County uh, uh, State Controller's Office said, no, I'm sorry, that, that's not going to work. The Time Tower Record reports that local minorities' of opponents, vocal minorities, that's what you guys are, everyone in this room is a vocal minority, okay? You're threatening major tax revenue and job creation opportunities, okay? It's your problem that we don't have. We're not all wealthy. It's your problem, according to that. <laughs> Top executives at Dan Scammer and Medline told local businesses it 
gives you a problem. Nice guys, huh? Good neighbors? Mm -hmm. So, these practices have given us a loss of communication, a loss of trust. They pit the labor unions against the populace. Those labor unions, those are good kids. And they were there to fight because they had been all pumped up by Todd Delorio, who was basically selling them down the river that same night. Mm -hmm. Okay? Lack of creativity, lack of diversity. Okay, concentration of power and very few people. Backroom discussions. I don't know what they're saying. They could be saying nothing. Doesn't matter if it's still in a backroom discussion. It's wrong. What, regardless of what they're saying, it's wrong. Time and energy cost to fight projects. I ha Believe me, my heart goes out to everybody in this room because I know the amount of time that you people spend researching these things, fighting these things, helping to raise money, you know, doing protests, giving lectures, giving uh, uh, county or townwide meetings. I know I've been to so many of them. It's a lot of time and energy. We need to consolidate some of these things. Disenfranchisement and apathy. Here's a public service announcement for all you guys. Maybe you should all like stop electing the same politicians. Okay? Maybe that's a good place to start. Maybe let's get some different people in here. Let's not get people that are here for 30 and 40 years. So, we have to get busy. For some reason it doesn't like this slide. make a couple of follow-up comments because sometimes we lose track of our collective history. <clears throat> in 1984, Chester, New York built an industrial park on wetlands. And the lawyer who did that is still the vice chair of the Republican Party now in our county, my dear friend Ben Ostra who represented at the time both the town and the developer who was building the industrial park, a very common practice which Chris mentioned regarding Mr. Golden. The Orange County landfill, for those of you who don't remember that fiasco, $48 million of Orange County money, another $9 million spent defending the placement of the landfill on the county's principal aquifer, over 100 acres of wetlands with no 404 permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. The chief architect of the project was then our county executive and now is the supervisor of the town we're meeting at, resides at meetings right here, Mr. Diana. CPV, environmental studies done seven years before the project commenced. We tried to get supplemental environmental studies done because there had been such an increment in knowledge about the impact of fracking and the use of fossil fuels. The court rejected the application. We sought review. We got review two years later in the higher court, at which point the project had essentially been finished. Legoland, we raised every issue in court. Our petition was denied. When I say every issue, we talked about the lack of drainage. We talked about the absolute impropriety of the site. We talked about the noise pollution, the aesthetic pollution. We talked about the use of the part of the site, which wasn't really part of the site, because they own 500 acres and are using 150. We have, for two and a half years, waited for the appellate court in Brooklyn to hear us. They've never heard us. Alan Schenkman, who is the presiding justice of that court, was appointed by the governor, was one of the major proponents of that project. So wherever we look in our county with regard to a major project, the forces that Ms. Mealy described are at work. And you know something? Because so much money is involved, as she intimated, CPV is a $930 million project. Legoland is a six to seven hundred million dollar project. We are outworked. There aren't that many of us fighting back, but we're outworked and we're outspent. The only way that this is going to change, the only way is it going to change is if people, people, individual people, forgetting about what party they may be in, forgetting about other issues, 
get together and say that this kind of unaccountable corporate controlled government is not something in the public interest. And frankly, over 30 years of trying, we have not really been able to establish a sustained movement in this county to do that. Until and unless we are able to do that, we are going to be outmanned, so to speak, by the group you just heard about. So that's my two cents. The history, to me, is very clear. There's a longitude here. It's not started yesterday. It didn't start five years ago. It's been going on here for a very long time. And our efforts, while they've been genuine, in some cases very persistent, have been insufficient. And self-criticism is important. We have to accept that. We have not been able to really effectually fight back. So I think that's an issue. We're going to <clears throat> send out notices for other meetings. I'm going to encourage everyone who's here, because we're not, this is not a one-shot meeting. We're going to continue to work on these issues. There are people here running for office in Montgomery. I wish you the best of luck and well. And I, I think we'll obviously send a huge, huge message to the county if in a place like Montgomery there's going to be any electoral showing of substance. Certainly winning would be remarkable, and I pray for it. But a strong showing would tell a, send a message to men. Uh, we're going to open this for any questions for Chris, any comments any of you want to make. And you may have, from your own communities, insights you want to share about what's going on. Mr. Hughes. <clears throat> it's Animal Hughes, Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes. <laughs> that was my father. All right. As you age, I'm less willing to call you Animal. Okay. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> in the earlier part of my misspent years, I spent quite a bit of time in various parts watching what they did and how they played their games. At one time, I was even the president of the Planning Federation in the county. What happens in a very short period of time, these people get appointed on these boards. It's a political appointment. They sit down, they don't go to school. They have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. And these developers know it. They know that they can come into almost right. any community and run you over because the boards don't know what they're doing. Right. Now, during the time I was president, <laughs> I set up a new way of doing business by contacting the state of New York and sending their people with point bulletins. They paid a lot of money to prepare curriculum to make the people get where they need to be. And I made a way where you could get your accelerated learning curve to where in a few short years you could know what you were supposed to be doing. Right now, a guy gets appointed to a board, he might sit there for 20, 30, 40 years. It's the same guys. So the new guy comes in on the board, he sits there and he thinks that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's not that way. Now, you had mentioned, I won't name them personally, but there's several lawyer groups that the minute I walked out the door, they got rid of the state. They didn't want anybody to be informed. They brought their own lawyers from local in to teach the boards their way of doing business, not the law of the state of New York. Now. You could cover that wall right there with the books that cover 239 Home Rule. You know what I'm talking about. I have all of that right in my head, but who else at the board does? I would be looking around at the board, and it's the legislative body. It's the county executive's office. It's the partnership. It's the accelerator. It's the IDA. It's the Citizens Foundation. There's nine of them. Chamber of Commerce. It's the same 100 people. This guy's the president in this group, and he's the vice president in that group, and this one here. You've got to get rid of those 100 people. When you're planning board in the municipality, the county being this municipality, as the guy that's the lawyer that's representing most of the big projects sitting on the planning board in the county, there's something wrong here. And this is what happens. It's a boys club. Well, I think what you're saying is all right, right on, and important. The question is projecting that message in a clear way that people in the county can appreciate and understand. Many people pay very little attention to what's going on. And with the newspaper in its rather dreadful state, 
of, of, of dying. I mean, these newspapers, we know the online version is, is whatever it is, but the, the print version, there's very little that we share. Because one of the functions of the newspaper is to, in a sense, inform people sort of the common base of understanding. When that common base of understanding doesn't exist, we're impoverished. Who so pays, we have to organize. Who pays for the newspaper? The guy in the I back understand. of the paper? I understand. When the IDA wanted to make Bark and Chevrolet a point of destination for tourism, <laughs> something is wrong, brother. You got it. Thank Thanks you. for listening to what I have to say. Please Thank do. You. I live in the village of Chester. My, my name is Mary Alfelli. And the only way we can do change things is to get people out to vote. And uh, sadly enough, we have elections coming up. And out of the couple of thousand of people in Chester, that live in Chester, we'll be lucky if 2% of the population comes out and votes. So we, our biggest problem is we have bedroom communities that do not vote in local elections. And that's why we have the same people sitting on all these boards and nobody questioning it. That to me seems like a real part of the problem. How do we get people to get up and pay attention and vote? And you're not. So we, we're right now in an organizing model where people are smitten with the notion that if they're online okay. and they publicize their meetings online and they do this online and they do that online, they're going to organize the universe. Mm -hmm. I think in communities like the ones we're dealing in, we have to go back to another way of understanding what politics is about. It's about people meeting their neighbors, coming to certain feelings, sentiments about their neighbors, their neighborhoods, their communities, wanting to see those thrive, but wanting to be part of that thriving and not see something imposed on them. Jack O'Malley left earlier, but just let me tell you one minute about a project that's going on right now, because you talked about warehouses. <laughs> on near Stewart Airport, on Route 207, there is a storage facility on the right, for those of you who know this, the, the area, storage facility, and in about a half a mile to the left, you turn 787 off to go to Stewart Airport. Right next to that, there's a large 38-acre parcel. The parcel is zoned so that if you can build a warehouse, but ancillary to something else. So if you had a business, you might be able to build a warehouse to store products from your business. So a warehouse company comes in, they don't give a hoot about any of that. They want to build six warehouses on the 38 acres. This gentleman, who is here tonight, borders, he lives right there. He looks at the, the, he looks at the zoning classification. He says, you can't do that. One board sends it to the other board. And the same characters who are on this up here, Drake Loeb, Golden, they're all involved. They're all fighting for this. The Orange Partnership, they're fighting for it. And the neighbors are saying, wait a minute, doesn't this zoning mean anything? And they're contorting, they're thising, they're thatting. They then come back with an amendment. The amendment says 700,000 square feet of warehousing and 20,000 square feet of offices. So now the offices are, are driving the warehousing. And everybody knows it's a contrivance. And there's nobody identified as, as doing it. Same point. Who's going to do it? Same thing with your Montgomery example. We don't have to tell you who's doing it. Well, how, do we, how can we tell that's really what's going to happen? On and on, the same nonsense. So here's the point. Those neighbors got together. They weren't communicating by emails, texts, this and that. They were sitting in a room together, looking at each other, the old-fashioned way, relating to each other as human beings, coming to appreciate each other. They had, had very little contact as neighbors for years. Here, all of a sudden, there was a threat, and that brought them to some togetherness. All right, yes? Berger and then Ferry. Yeah. Uh, I'm Don Berger uh, from Montgomery, uh, and uh, we are residents to check in Montgomery. Uh, we've been fighting uh, this whole thing in Montgomery for quite a while now. Uh, what I want to do now is invite everyone here. We're having a community day at Benedict Park in Montgomery. And it's basically an informational day uh, to bring our residents, up, teach them or tell them or educate them on what's going on in Montgomery. When is it? Uh, it's Saturday from uh, 11 to 4. This Saturday? This Saturday. And where is it? Benedict Park. Benedict Park. It's off the yeah. 17K just outside the village limits, village of Montgomery limits. Uh, right now, we presently, we are, you know, hear about Medline, and we're going to take the gold star of what happened. I don't care what Spoof this says. I don't care what Winchell says. RPM is going to take the gold star for this uh, pilot program that was yeah. abandoned. We did the work. Uh, 
Uh, you know, politicians and something else, they like it. We had great help from Scoopus. We went to Scoopus two months ago, brought him in on this. We did that. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on here. And what the thing that I come to pass, and I, Chris, me and you have talked about this a lot, is that, you know, we are packing the houses in uh, for these town boards and uh, planning boards and the IDA boards. They are not listening. How do we get them to listen? Having an, having an election, having an election, you're running, no, you're running for office. Gentleman back here is running for office. Okay, <coughs> you're, you're, you're doing more than in many communities. Election after election, and it's in one minute. Election after election in our county. If you look at it, town for town, historically in the last thirty years, you'll see that about seventy percent of the seats go uncontested. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. There's no there's no competition. That's what I said at the beginning of this meeting. There's no concerted opposition. And that takes a period to develop and you have to sustain it. If all you are is a one year wonder, you're nowhere. That's what they're looking for. People to come up and challenge them for one year and then they're, they're gone, they disappear. The other thing that you can do, and this is what started with the ABO, this is how we got after the ABO, all right? You can write to Perlman's office. I know, this all, by the way, all has been turned over to the New York State Attorney General because they're basically thumbing their nose at uh, the authority's <coughs> budget office and they're saying, you don't have the right to determine us. And so they turned everything over to that. That started with a online request. This is what these people are doing. This is what they're representing they're doing. They need to know that. They don't know what's going on up in Albany, truly. You ha it, it, and that's why I kept pointing out, this is a weakness here. This is what their mission statement is. How can you go against your mission statement, all right? They have to listen to you. They have to, you have to start talking to these people. I don't care whether you hate them and you hate the ground that they walk on. You have to establish some kind of communication. Just suck it up and talk to them. You know, they're human beings, they're neighbors of yours. You have to talk to them. Vincent? And I, I also want to thank Vince for, oh, for helping out and taking care of this for me. Go ahead and thank you. Thank you. Um, what dismays me is in some of the conversations we talk about these people as if they're honest players. I don't believe that they are honest players. I believe that they're making money somehow under the table, and we should find out how. The other thing is, you mentioned Alan Shankman. Alan Shankman tried to screw around with the county and the, and the government building, and he's down in Brooklyn screwing around with the people here again. I don't believe that some of these judges are honest. I believe that they're corrupt. Judges make decisions and allow the developers to break the decisions, to break the law, and then they don't do anything afterward. Why? I wouldn't be, maybe that they're <coughs> corrupt. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they just sit there and collect their money and don't care about us. <coughs> uh, the other thing is, Eddie Diana, sitting here as a supervisor of the town of Wallkill, he tried to embezzle almost $10 million from the federal government. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting here, voted in again, and, and the, the supervisor of the town of Wallkill. Thank you, Michael. You can vote against him, by the way. It's All right. Yeah, you can vote oh, against him. Over here. But planning boards uh, have multiple year turns, and you don't vote on them. Hi, um, Anita Falcom, part of the Residents Protecting Montgomery, and I appreciate everything that is being brought up here. <coughs> Chris, fantastic. Um, to get people out to vote, unfortunately, we're in a society that needs shock information anymore. So, I mean, I'm sitting here and watching this presentation, and I'm going, wait a minute, this is government wall sharking. Basically, that's what it is. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, how did this happen? It can easily happen. You know, people start out with good intentions and power and money can change it. <coughs> but I didn't know this, and it happened, you know, it, this group, we're, we're neighbors that sit in a room together. And it is true, we, we need to band together, and that's what has, what's happening tonight. But also, when you write your letters to the newspapers or to the government officials, you know, use one word saying that we're all using. Hey, listen, this looks like government loan sharking to me. Could that be true? You ask that question. Somebody has to answer it. And if we're all asking similar questions, 
sooner or later somebody's going to listen. You have to say something seven times before somebody <laughs> even hears it. So, I mean, that's just a little bit of what we've been doing. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. One thing that I want to follow up with what you said is this. There are people here, and I know at least two-thirds of you fairly well from our struggles over many issues. Where we're going to set up this so that everybody's going to be able to, to be part of an, an email chain, okay? If you have something in your community, as you certainly have in Montgomery, we've tried to rally to yeah. you and give you what support we could when asked. The citizens, concerned citizens for Orange County, come to, to you. You've, we've had meetings, et cetera. Where there's something in your particular community, whether it's Warwick, whether it's Wallkill, whether it's Goshen, whether it's Chester, where we know what issues there are, et cetera, please ask for help. Yeah. Say there's a meeting on such and such a date. We need people to come to the meeting. Give a synopsis of the issue so people understand what's going on. Don't just rely on the newspaper and say, look at the newspaper article. In other words, that's how we have to develop an organizing presence. I mean, don't be shy about asking for assistance. I, I'm happy that Dan, you got up and you said, you know, we, we, we have this event coming up on, on Saturday. That's what we need to do. We need to support each other. If that begins to happen, then you develop some solidarity, some sense of a movement, some sense of momentum that we can be of assistance and work with each other. And the other part of it is don't worry so much about you don't like this person. The, the, the politics of personality have to always be discounted. That's not the important point. People rub you the wrong way, fine. Look beyond that. Look to what you can do to work together. Okay? Yes, Jocelyn. Um, I just wanted to add, if Stand you up, really, please, really don't like, hear you. Oh, thank you. you really don't like Eddie Diana, uh, he does have somebody running against him, as he did not two years ago. Uh, Frank Dondanto, who's uh, running on the Democratic ticket. Um, we also have um, Neil Meyer in the third ward. I don't know if anybody here lives in the town of Wallkill. No? <laughs> if you know people live in the town of Wallkill, tell them to vote for Frank, and if they're in the third ward, Neil. Um, I will yeah. publicly say that if you are in Ed, in Eric Valentin, Valentin's district, he's worthless. So, um, sorry. <laughs> All right, does anyone else want to make any comments about what you heard tonight? Yes, Marianne, please. Hi, I've been involved in these struggles for well, for 10 years, it seems like. More than that. More than that, right. 10 and, years. Yeah. Oh. Well, so credit. <laughs> but anyway, what Michael's saying is so true, because what happens is, you know, when we had the CPB issue, we weren't getting people from Newburgh. Very rarely, one person from Moore, or a couple people from Moore, who are here tonight, would come. But then what happens is it dies down, because we don't look like we get success. So the people that are involved, you know, they get tired, they get worn out, they give up. But we're not crossing paths. Like, we should all be over in Montgomery now, helping Montgomery. Yes. Montgomery should have been over helping us with CPB. Yes. But nobody had that idea that that was what to do because it was not in their backyard. But as you can see from Chris's presentation, this is such a global county issue that affects all of us. Because today they're doing it in Montgomery, Yesterday they were doing it in Middletown, and you know what? Now Dan Scammer is in Newburgh, and it's all the same issue. It's all the same people, and it's all the same greed, and yet we allow it to continue because we don't join forces. And I know it's hard. Believe me, I'm exhausted from the number of things that I've been involved with over the years of going to this meeting, going to that meeting, plus what I do in my own town. I am on a zoning board in my town. I've been on that zoning board almost 30 years, and people don't come to Otisville to do much development development because we don't have much land and we're very happy about that <laughs> but at the same time people from Otisville won't get off their duff and help people in Montgomery because you know what people are very provincial and they only deal with it's in their backyard and I say even if it's just this small group if we could help each other as Michael has definitely seriously recommended that would help some because some people you're just not going to be able to move off what they're not doing because that's just who they are. And we are, the, the last week of this month, we are gonna get back together, whoever can come and deal with Dan Scammer because we have to understand more about how we can have state policies that say we're not gonna be reliant on fossil fuels, we're diminishing our reliance significantly, and yet, wherever you turn around, there's a major fossil fuel plant that's being built. CPV, fine. Two and a half times CPV size, 
Cricket Valley, Dover Plains, New York. I'm filing a lawsuit tomorrow to try to stop that. That project, that project is two and a half times CPV. It's just starting. It was approved nine years ago. No supplemental environmental study has ever been done of it. The impacts are incredible. Since it was approved, there's been major changes in state energy policy. We're not supposed to be relying on fossil fuel in 2030, 2040. This is a project with a 45-year life, two and a half times as big as CPV. So what are we doing? What are we doing? So, you know, Scott Martens? Um, yeah, and I can continue with, with that, Michael, and say that um, we are presented right now with an opportunity to um, to, to solidify our efforts on, on two fronts. Um, if you're an environmentalist right now, um, you can join our efforts against the Dan Scammer uh, repowering um, proposal. Um, and uh, there'll be a, the, the city uh, council of Newburgh will be voting on a resolution to, um, to not approve this project. Um, basically, as an answer to Orange County legislature's um, vote to to, um, to support it, which was last Thursday, um, which was terrible, um, if anybody was there. Um, so that's also an opportunity to, um, you know, to come out against the, the, the cronyism in our government. Um, when, is that, that, when is that vote gonna be? So that's gonna be on the, on the 15th, it's a Monday, um, seven o'clock or 7.30. 15th um, is a Tuesday. Tuesday. So then the day before that. 14th. It's, it's the second Monday of the month. Yeah. Thank you. Um, That's the city of Newburgh. They meet at 87 Broadway yeah. in their fourth floor city council time? chambers. They usually start at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. There's public comment invited before they meet on agenda items. So if people yeah. want to come and speak to this issue, we're going to have a meeting the last week in October of this group. Mm -hmm. has no name at this point, but this group. I'll send out an email. I'm going to get people who know about Dan Scammer to come here and do what Chris did tonight. Give a, an informed presentation about the project. Because all you're hearing is its attributes and benefits. And again, where does it stand in terms of energy policy for our state and nation and world? We need to understand that. I did okay. have a quick question sure, too, please. if I could. Beth, um, you're next. About the, the labor requirements on the pilots, maybe one of you guys can answer this. So, you know, these are written into the, the contract. Correct. Who, who polices them? You said that the- Nobody. If the comptroller found that they were, you know, delinquent in that, who, who, who enforces that? The IDA is supposed to. They're supposed to. They're supposed to keep logs, and the logs, and the logs are supposed to be made available to the IDA. But in reality, there's no oversight. In New York State, in the last 30 years, there have been any number of these economic development efforts, all of which are pinned to job creation. The projected number of jobs compared to the number created is about 16%. So a company will say, we're creating 100 jobs. For every 100 jobs they promise, and they get monies in part based on that set of promises, 16 jobs have been created. That's statewide. <laughs> Beth. Hi, Beth Hefner from Montgomery. Um, I would just like to say that on October 15th, there's a public hearing at the town of Montgomery um, regarding the special use permit for Medline. And that is at what time? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. That's a planning at board the meeting? building planning. of the planning board on Bracken Road. And they're not going to let you talk to them, right? No, it's a public hearing. Public hearing. Yeah, public hearing. Okay. And public They'll hearing. They'll take comments in the beginning of the meeting, so you have to be there on time. Right. And it's packed, so come early. So Dan Chiago? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how everybody else feels, but I feel like we need a like a central place to go to discuss um, dialogue regularly and possibly uh, organize some tasks and sustain momentum. Um, you know, I don't know where, but um, that might be a, a good idea to pick like a date and time, like I don't know, a Tuesday after. Tuesday evening from seven to eight, and uh, uh, and like then you know um, push these you know the elected officials whether it be calling Governor Cuomo's office or you know or whoever and you know put pressure 
but we'll get we'll get them there. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Okay. And just a quick clarification, yeah. please. It, the, the Newburgh City Council meeting is Tuesday, the fifteenth, because of uh, Columbus Day. Thank you. Monday. So both nights, same mm -hmm. night. All right. One more. One more. Who? One to me. Greg. And then you, Vince. All right. Greg Winner. And then Vincent. Just and then want to make a comment, please, of everybody here. Maybe we need a, a reform party of Orange County. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> right. well, let's, let's see where we Democrats, go. Greens, Independents, <laughs> but a reform party mm -hmm. to change things. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Vincent? We, we have traditionally looked at these issues as in my backyard issues, yes. and I think we have to change the, the view of that. This is uh, because, because what someone in Montgomery is feeling is different from what someone in uh, Wauwanda is feeling. Uh, different from what people in Newburgh are feeling. But when you consider this, it affects everyone in exactly the same way. It's taxation without representation. They are taking That's our it. money across the county and using it for other purposes, and we pay more as a result. It's taxation without representation. That's why we need reform. Thank you. <laughs> Jess, sorry. Uh, if anybody is a member of their party, in their area, uh, town of Crawford Democrats, whatever Republican version of that there is, and you're not thinking about replacing Steve Newhouse, mm. anything you do in your town over the next year and a half or however long he has left mm. is completely useless and not going anywhere. <laughs> the Orange County Partnership is a mafia. That's my personal opinion. Steve Newhouse allows this mafia to extort us for our natural resources and our children's future. Replacing Steve Newhouse with a Democrat isn't necessarily going to solve our problem because 70% of the elected officials who made CPV happen are Democrats. Right. It's not a matter of so, replacing. Thank you. I, I love that Dan's mentioning, I, I keep hearing people mentioning like basically creating our whole government all over again in little satellite issues, like a place to meet where we talk and, and we talk. Isn't that supposed to be what our town board meetings are? Isn't that supposed to be what our county <laughs> legislature is? Are, are, are we supposed to get together on a regular basis? And I love that you're saying that because that's what we're supposed to do. But And, and Mr. Animal here, uh, I, I love you because you brought up the Orange County Citizens Foundation. I usually get hauled out of a room when I try to bring up what an evil yes. organization yes. That organization yes. is great name. I remember the first meeting I was at, and I heard Nancy Project, Orange County Citizens uh. Foundation. And I got my camera, and I was like, "Oh, this lady's gonna be like, I care about your water." And she was like, "I agree with Maureen Helen." Uh. <laughs> and if you look at their 990, they're responsible for garbage. They're responsible for paving roads. They're responsible for anything you would think the opposite of an Orange County Citizens Foundation is. <laughs> so, um, pat pattern for progress, same thing. Um, believe it or not, even though they generate a lot of great it's data. The, same um, the ABA uh, Alliance for Balanced Growth is Orange County Partnership. It's a committee that they form. It is that, that screenshot is from the Orange County Partnership website. So replace your county executive or everything else you're doing is for naught. Okay. Then we need a candidate. Yeah, you do. You do. You need a, a Republican, a Democrat. I don't care. One. Actually, I prefer it to be not because all of us voting blindly down our, our party lines is what got us here. And I'll just leave you with this, this last hopefully inspiring thought. I've been a lifelong Green Party member for over 20 years. This, first, this is the first year I, I went with what I consider to be the less racist party right now, <laughs> which is the Democratic Party. But it, it, as I really looking at an inside view of the Democrats now, I'm, I'm seeing a very similar mirror to the, the polarization on the right as well. Okay, so so please don't think that replacing Steve Newhouse with a Democrat is going to solve your problems. You'll get another Sean Patrick Maloney who says that CPV is better than coal or something. So so just think critically, please. Thank you. And I'm right, we, have a, we have a couple of more comments. Mr. Hughes and yeah. then the South <laughs> Vincent said what I was going to bring up about the taxation without representation, and that's exactly what it is. Everywhere but in Sicily, they call that usury. Absolutely. All right? It is a mafia. And the, the hundred people that man those 12 boards, it's the same people over and over again with the same song and dance. 
Right. If we don't hang together, they'll hang us one at a time, and we got to start <laughs> hanging together because this stuff has got to stop. Thank you. My taxes are equivalent to a mortgage now after 30 exactly. years. Exactly. It's ridiculous. Yep. Okay, I'm going to say something, and you know, we the concerned citizens for the Hudson Valley has been showing up everywhere and all that. I don't know if you're not getting the messages, but or if you're not on our thing, we need you at our meetings in Goshen too. We need our, we, you know, when they just decided to dump 80,000 cubic yards of topsoil above our reservoir, we had four people in the room, guys. So it's really, really, I feel pretty angry that we're showing up and I'm sitting in your meetings. We need you to come to our meetings, okay? Because 80,000 cubic yards, and on July 4th, they just yeah. fucked Orange Goshen, the village of Goshen that has been doing the American, uh, mm -hmm. the Great American Weekend, mm -hmm. and they're gonna, they're gonna do that to this town, which I think is karma. But anyhow, guys, please, we need you to come to us too, okay? Please. Thank you. Thank you. We have a unique opportunity because of the downfall and the um, collapse of the newspaper industry. Uh, I don't know if you people realize, but the Ottaway family started that paper in this county. Yeah. They also started the Citizens Foundation, the partnership. They started all these organizations. They po po populated them with their puppets and they have embedded our county under their domain. They do not have the power authority anymore because they're gone, the Ottaway family. The, the no, newspaper Heimlich is, is still gone. here. So we do have a unique opportunity with our online presence, with our new media, to develop a new system of getting, disseminating the information that we need to collectively gather to fight the situation because it is embedded in our county. Mm -hmm. So it is a great opportunity for us to start thinking, putting our thinking cap, think creatively, think new, think outside the box of how we've done business before. And this is a start. This is how we started right here. Meet your neighbors. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. somebody yes. asked me to ask because of what Ms. Gok said a moment ago, who people want to see running the county executive. If they see any people they want to see trying to run because I guess Ms. Milley feels it's not too early to start that conversation. Yeah, they should have started it a year ago. Patrick Davis was a great candidate. He was. He was a great yeah. candidate. Well. Is he around? No. He is. I, I've been in contact with him as of recent. Another thing that you need to know, I was appointed by the state senate through Senator Scoopis's office to be on the sighting committee for Dan's camera. We have not met yet the sighting committee. <laughs> Now, I've been to a lot of meetings, and you, you know, you might think this is comedy, but it's not, and I know I can get into the comedy, but this is real. As the Article 10 goes along and the Title 5 has to be reported, there's a spot in the middle where that sighting committee is supposed to sit and meet and gather all the information. I've been to 15 meetings besides tonight's meeting, and the common denominator that I find is the promoters, the developers, the townspeople, anybody that has a piece of it, does not have a complete package of information. I set the turbines on the floor and ran the overhead cranes in the Roston generating station, and I also ran the cranes in dance camera. I know what it takes to put these things together, and I know what dinosaurs they are, and I know what a problem they can be. My first question was, if this company has a string of suckers that's willing to dump four to five hundred million dollars on four cans that are going to be junk in 20 years. I have this bridge in Brooklyn I want to sell. <laughs> I don't want them to buy that bridge. The it's other part of it bridge. is this too. Yeah. At the most recent county legislative meetings that I've been at on two occasions, two members on a committee, mm -hmm. Ways and Means, chose to abstain. Yeah. I know, what's that? Are you really bringing the people's that? voice that you're supposed to represent That's by abstaining? That's because they have conflict. Get rid of them, too. And all right, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be oh, here. Yeah, I, I hope, like, believe we, I believe hope I've got a gonna, problem with all of them. I hope we're going to be here together, many people as can come, on the 29th of October, just three weeks from tonight. And we're going to try at that time to have a fuller discussion about Dan Scammer. I'm going to invite Ms. Kassam. I'm going to invite anybody who has information through the networks I have to come, and you guys set up a panel, and you'll present 
divide an hour up four ways. We need to disseminate information in the county about the project. A complete package right. is not available at present well, that I've seen. Well, not even if it's not complete, meetings. as complete as it is. All right, we're going to adjourn the meeting. I thank everybody for coming. Thank you, Chris Mealy, for your presentation.